Welcome uh, everybody. I'm glad to present today a lecture on the fecal anal incontinence following uh, colorectal or coloanal anastomosis and how to prevent uh, it. Fecal incontinence is an important factor for the quality of life. Fecal incontinence is involuntary loss of stools or flatus. It can be passive incontinence, sudden urge incontinence, mixed, or can arrive after um, um, defecation. Fecal incontinence is one of the symptoms of anterior resection syndrome or sigmoid resection syndrome. Anterior resection syndrome and uh, sigmoid resection syndrome will include uh, high bowel uh, uh, frequency per day, Uh, with uh, liquid or solid stools, multiple evacuation and multiple movements with uh, limited uh, time of period, uh, that is uh, what we call the fragmentation, and urgency and fecal incontinence. This is a factor that will uh, uh, destroy the quality of life. We have to evaluate this fecal incontinence, and the clinical evaluation is the best technique. Uh, it is uh, evaluated according to the fecal incontinence severity index score or the Yog and Wexner score. This is a Cleveland Clinic Florida fecal incontinence score that um, will uh, uh, have. Uh, a score um, and a scale from uh, between 0 to 20, depending uh, of uh, the um, frequency of uh, incontinence concerning solid, liquid, gas, the necessity to have a wheels pad, and um, uh, to evaluate the alteration of the lifestyle, depending of the frequency. Um, per day, per month, per week, and uh, with a score that uh, will be uh, very high in case of incontinence. We can be surprised when uh, we analyze the different causes of um, uh, fecal incontinence after surgery. The main um, Surgical procedure that will provoke incontinence are mainly hemorrhoid surgery, of, um, internal sphincterotomy for um, fissure, and uh, fistulectomy that uh, represent uh, more than 50%. Uh, colorectal uh, surgical procedure, including uh, anterior resection and uh, Um, restorative proctocolectomy are less than uh, 30%. To analyze the defecation, it is necessary to know the physiology. Normally, the sigmoid is a reservoir, reservoir in which the um, stools are storage. And uh, when the sigmoid is full, we will have bowel movement um, that will uh, expulse the stools into the rectum. And this will fill and distance the rectum and stimul stimulate the receptor, the stretch receptor from coming from parasympathetic fiber. The receptor will transmit the signal of uh, filling of uh, fullness along the afferent fibers to neuron in the spinal cord, uh, always uh, parasympathetic. Then, a spinal reflex is initiated via the parasympathetic motor fibers, the efferent fibers, to stimulate the contraction of the rectum and sigmoid colon and relaxation of the internal anal sphincter. It's time to defecate uh, with a voluntary motor neuron um, action that uh, inhibited uh, the external anal sphincter to relax 
and uh, allow the passage of the feces um, with um, command coming via the pudendal nerves. To understand the continents, it is uh, necessary to know the different factors of continents. We have the anal sphincter, external anal sphincter. We have also the angulation of the distal rectum between the anal canal and the distal rectum. And um, this angulation is maintained by a contraction of the puborectalis that will uh, give an angulation of 90 degrees that um, provoke what we call the flap valve to avoid um, uh, the, with a good uh, tension on the anal uh, sphincter uh, to avoid um, incontinence. For the defecation, we will have a relaxation of the pelvic floor and external anal sphincter, all somatic, with uh, voluntary um, uh, command. The anorectal angle will open by straightening the um, rectum and uh, will help uh, the voluntary abdominal pressure using, for, the, for example, the Valsalva maneuver that will push the um, uh, stools, um, uh, increasing uh, the rectal pressure. Finally, uh, the anal canal open and the anal mucosa will uh, uh, evert temporarily for facilitating the evacuation, uh, that is the defecation. What are the causes of fecal incontinence? We have a lot of causes. And uh, the first is the loss of rectal reservoir, the loss of uh, anorectal uh, angle that uh, uh, provokes the flap valve, the um, destruction of uh, anorectal sensitivity or the reduction, the anal sphincter damage, injuries, and uh, autonomic nerves, injuries, and uh, colonic dysmobility, motility. This uh, will explain uh, that there is a lot of factors to provoke fecal anal incontinence, with a big problem on and big impact on uh, quality of life. So we can uh, classify in three groups the fecal anal incontinence. First, fecal anal incontinence due to rectal reservoir loss or dysfunction. Uh, a group on the anal uh, sphincter damage and a group due to colonic dysmotility and autonomic nerve damage. First group, rectal reservoir loss or rectal reservoir dysfunction. Uh, when uh, we resect the rectum, we lose the um, physiologic reservoir. And there is a lot of paper showing that uh, after low anterior resection, and uh, total mesorectal excision with colo localorectal or coloanal anastomosis. Uh, we can uh, improve the um, quality of uh, the um, uh, continence if we do the anastomosis on the dry pouch colonic reservoir to improve the um, volume of the distal uh, rectum, neorectum, uh, that will uh, facilitate the uh, continence. There is a lot of paper that analyze the quality of uh, the results uh, after coloanal. Um, and low colorectal anastomosis for rectal carcinoma using 
euh, euh, réservoir, euh, des pouch réservoir, colonique réservoir, and um, uh, doing a side to hand anastomosis, comparing both. And um, it seems that uh, if the reservoir J pouch, colonic J pouch, is useful, it's uh, mainly useful during six months, uh, one year, but at two years, the results are similar. The loss of the anorectal angle, if we do anastomosis too straight, as I explained, we will uh, lose the um, angulation that will uh, give a good continence with a flap valve, because we will have a, um, a straight anastomosis, and uh, particularly in uh, liquid stools, we will have a loss of uh, um, uh, fecal uh, uh, mass. Fecal incontinence due to rectal reservoir dysfunction. We have seen capacity is important, but also the compliance. Um, and it seems that capacity and compliance are reduced in the reorectum. And um, we have a greater pressure that uh, may be illicit in the neorectum than in normal rectum using same volumes. It is why in low rectal resection with colon anastomosis, the construction of a more capacious neorectal reservoir using a colonic pouch might be a benefit for some patient. Hild anastomotic leak and radiotherapy, both neoadjuvant and adjuvant, seems to be predictive negative factor for neorectal function, reducing the capacity and the compliance of the reservoir, neo-reservoir. Anal sphincter damage. How we do, how we analyze this, um, all the failure of any of the following anatom anatomical structure can lead to incontinence we can have failure of the internal sphincter, that is an involuntary sphincter um, uh, with a, a involuntary contraction. The external sphincter failure, that is a voluntary um, uh, pressure, um, but we cannot maintain a long time. The um, anorectal angle and puborectalis muscles. Very important to have a good angulation uh, of the um, anorectal angle. But also, we are evocated anal cushion in the upper half of the anal canal that is uh, called the transitional zone, anal transitional zone, ATZ and uh, having a good uh, abdominal pressure to push the um, uh, faces from uh, uh, doing a good evacuation and also to uh, reduce the angle of uh, the um, anorectal um, angulation. When we do a sleeve mucosectomy, it was uh, evocated as a cause of a fecal incontinence. Anal cushions are localized in the upper half of the anal canal, and uh, uh, it is what we call the anal transitional zone. I did a study in 30 years ago uh, to analyze the results of uh, the um, resection of the anal transitional zone when I was doing uh, uh, coloanal anastomosis, uh, resecting this uh, uh, zone. We have uh, verified uh, no um, uh, increasing of uh, uh, incontinence due to this uh, excision. We lose the um, anorectal inhibitor reflex 
but we have no more risk of incontinence. The only problem is in case of uh, a small um, uh, reservoir uh, and a lot of uh, contraction with, uh, uh, into the reservoir uh, that uh, will uh, um, provoke more risk of incontinence, but we have seen that before. Lesion of the anal sphincter. This can be due to the uh, transanal stapling device. And uh, there was paper uh, that demonstrate the danger of a big uh, stapler uh, to um, uh, provoke uh, injury of the internal anal sphincter. This was verified um, by uh, ultrasonography, endoanal ultrasonography, and uh, it is uh, why uh, when we were doing open procedure, the ba Baker technique was proposed to limit the risk of postoperative temporary incontinence that uh, were due to uh, injury of the internal anal sphincter. We have also to do a soft dilatation of the sphincter before introducing the stapler. Other risk it is when we do uh, internal sphincter resection. Uh, we know that for distal tumor uh, there is a necessity if we want to keep the external sphincter, we have to resect some time partially, um, doing a partial intersphincter resection, uh, subtotal or total intersphincter resection, always with manual anastomosis on you, because it's impossible to do with a mechanical anastomosis. And uh, as uh, I said before, when we do a sleeve, sleeve mucosectomy for the type 1b lesion of the classification of Rullier, a very low um, tumor, we have to resect minimum one centimeter distal. We remove the mucosa, but we, don't, we respect the internal and external sphincter. In type 2 lesion, more close, we have to resect partially the um, uh, internal sphincter and um, with more risk of um, fecal incontinence. And in a very low rectal tumor reaching the pectineal line, we have to do total intersphincteric resection uh, uh, with a type 3 lesion. Other group, colonic dysmovement autonomic nerve damage. It is not uh, well known because when we speak of autonomic nerve damage, we are thinking uh, uh, mainly for urogenital uh, dysfunction. But when uh, we analyze uh, uh, sigmoid uh, uh, syndrome after a sigmoidectomy, um, we can uh, see that if we keep the autonomic nerve, uh, we have uh, less uh, sigmoid anterior syndrome after colorectal anastomosis. In uh, 2009, uh, Antonello Forgion analyzed uh, all the type, all the patient um, um, I operated um, for doing sigmoidectomy in uh, benign disease, in uh, sigmoiditis, and um, uh, with a particular technique that is a technique keeping all uh, the big vessels and particularly the superrectal vessels, artery and vein, and doing a resection at distance 
of the autonomic nerve running around the, those big vessels. And uh, he was surprised to see a good quality of life after this type of uh, um, uh, resection for sigmoid uh, disease. And uh, it is an uh, interesting paper because uh, Steve Wexner explains that it was the first paper that demonstrated the advantage of doing surgical procedure uh, with a benefit of quality of life after surgery. A more recent paper uh, published uh, on the same topic and uh, similar technique, they conclude that it is better to keep the vessels to have better functional results and to reduce the superior uh, the sigmoid rectal syndrome. And uh, I was uh, uh, thinking that it is mainly because we keep the autonomic nerves. How to evaluate this? We can evaluate the dysmotility um, of uh, uh, after surgery, colonic surgery, uh, doing a colonic manometry. And uh, this will reveal, for example, that there is contractile uh, segmental activity, propag and propagated uh, contraction of much greater amplitude than those that occur in LC patients. So more motility and more um, um, risk of incontinence. Type of surgery that can be responsible of this type of um, uh, the, um, uh, incontinence, fecal incontinence after uh, surgery. We know different type of colorectal coronal anastomotic technique that can be done by a stapler or ANSU uh, or hybrid technique using transanal, transabdominal, pure transanal. Um, can be done uh, um, uh, immediately or with a delayed anastomosis using uh, straight hand to hand simple side to hand, tap pouch, coloplasty. There is a lot of procedure uh, with the same purpose to improve the uh, quality of the results and particularly concerning the continent and uh, the frequency. And to hand colorectal anastomosis, this is a um, main uh, procedure used um, uh, worldwide since um, Nile Griffin described this uh, technique in the, during the 70s, uh, last century. Uh, this is a technique we do particularly after um, sigmoidectomy and uh, we do this anastomosis on the um, hybrid. Side-to-hand anastomosis, it is a technique prepared um, outside uh, the abdominal cavity through a suprapubic incision and we have introduced the anvil of a circular stapler. Uh, we push on the antimesenteric side of the distal uh, colon and uh, it, pushing the circular stapler into the rectum by a transanal way, we will uh, transfix the stapling line. Personally, I do on the left side of the stapling line to have um, only one here when we staples, avoiding uh, the risk of um, uh, fistula by a necrosis of one ear. It is used mainly when we have small distal uh, rectal stump 
and particularly when uh, we have a rectal stump less than 5 cm. When uh, we do this uh, anastomosis, we will uh, increase the size of the um, reservoir and uh, it is uh, why uh, it is recommended for this very low rectal anastomosis. And um, as uh, you know, probably, uh, John Nichols from St. Mark's Hospital was also recommending this type of anastomosis after sigmoidectomy with a big rectal stump to have a better uh, quality of vascularization on the um, uh, colonic side of the anastomosis. This is a control of this type of anastomosis. We do just before closing the um, uh, diverting stoma and as uh, you see, we push a contrast uh, through the distal segment of the diverting stoma and uh, we do a 3D color scan to analyze perfectly the anastomosis uh, to verify there is uh, no leak and uh, to have uh, a good um, control before closing the diverting stoma. We can do also side-to-hand coloanal anastomosis. For that, we use uh, the um, uh, Lone Star retractor that expose very well the um, anal canal and uh, particularly the distal segment. And uh, we fix uh, the distal uh, colon uh, using uh, separate stitches doing uh, on you anastomosis. We can see uh, the control of the side to hand using um, uh, color scan. Also, we can also perform um, end to hand anastomosis um, using uh, um, the um, distal colon and particularly the um, descending colon more compliant as a neo rectum uh, that will progressively so, develop um, with time. Or we can uh, do side to hand uh, with a J pouch. If we have a small rectal stump, we can do anastomosis uh, with um, a circular stapler. If not, we will do coloanal anastomosis manually. We can also perform delayed coloanal anastomosis um, and it is a technique more and more proposed, particularly in case of a morbid obese patient after fistula, after irradiation or in case of reoperation uh, with the possible advantages that are avoidance of permanent colostomy and um, also um, uh, having uh, less risk of anastomotic leak. As you see, the colon is pulled through the anal canal, then we fix it temporarily um, uh, with uh, control uh, regular every day to verify the coloration and the quality of the vascularization. And after a few days, we can uh, do a section and definitive fixation of the colon with the control that uh, anastomosis is uh, well vascular. What are the functional results? A partial mesorectal excision will give better results than a total mesorectal excision, particularly concerning the low anterior resection and the problem of continence. We have at 3 months and 12 months control and uh, there is a lower risk of major low anterior resection syndrome after partial mesorectal excision compared to total mesorectal excision. Concerning the different techniques of anastomosis, we can conclude, depending on the technique we use, we have no significant difference in surgical outcome between any of reconstructive techniques. Conclusion, uh, when uh, we do the anastomosis after TME without intersphincter resection, we can conclude that there is a superiority of colonic J pouch over straight coronal anastomosis. This is uh, 
temporarily, because this will disappear in the late postoperative period at one year, two years. And functional outcomes of uh, side to hand coronal anastomosis compared to those of colonic J pouch in the late postoperative period are similar. So why doing a colonic J pouch if we have similar results? Reconstruction after sleeve mucosal excision, as I said before, we did um, and with a J pouch, if when we do a total uh, rectal resection with uh, mucosal excision, and uh, we will have very good results concerning the continence. And um, we have no incontinence. It is a patient we um, include in the study. 12 patients on 12 were continent and it is mainly the size of the reservoir and the problem of complication um, that will uh, destroy the reservoir. Reconstruction after intersphincter repressation. It is in this type of uh, uh, surgical procedure uh, that we have imperfect functional results. We can have uh, nocturnal defecation, uh, fecal urgency, full continence will be present in 50%, but we have also fecal soiling in one third of patients and incontinence to flatness. And uh, this is a technique that is um, uh, in long term results uh, of um, the worst results, but we will see how to improve the quality of the result. To improve the fecal incontinence after surgery in rectal resection, we have uh, the possibility to use a medical treatment. But there is not enough evidence to support the effectiveness of any of them. First of all, conservative measures aim at symptomatic control. We will use a dietary regimen, a pharmacotherapy including motricity control, constipation agent and enema that uh, will be useful. Colonic irrigation in the morning in order to clean the colon or faces has been shown to reduce the symptoms. What I do when I operate the patient, when I do intersphincter repressation, coronal anastomosis or local rectal anastomosis, I do post-operative tests and rehabilitation uh, tests um, day two after surgery. Well, the patient is on the toilet and uh, we introduce in the distal uh, segment of the protective ileostomy a urinary catheter connected to saline serum enterograd enema. And uh, we do the irrigation and uh, fluid pass in the colon and will be evacuated arriving in the, the um, distal segment. Evacuation uh, will arrive and we ask to the patient to control this evacuation. First, he will see that his sphincter can be controlled, voluntary control, and uh, we can do the uh, control of the perfect continence. If not, we will repeat and uh, doing a rehabilitation using this technique regularly. It is important to have a good consistency of stools because more liquid, more risk of uh, incontinence. So it is uh, necessary to use some uh, medicine to have a better consistency of uh, stools. Rehabilitation uh, will be interesting tools for um, improving the quality of the continence after sphincter saving surgical procedures. Uh, the results in the literature are encouraging. Um, after rehabilitation, for example, um, Pucciani um, uh, demonstrates that uh, some patients have uh, no symptom, no incontinence after rehabilitation, and many patients saw an improvement in the Wexner um, score. And it is why we have to recommend, in case of problem, to do a rehabilitation using a biofeedback therapy in the treatment of anterior resection symptom after rectal cancer surgery. It is. Uh, 
uh, now time to say that fecal incontinence after colorectal surgery may be dependent of multiple factors, as the frequency, the stool consistency and volume, the loss of the rectal reservoir function, the sphincter damages, the disturbed function of the internal sphincter due to the autonomous nerve damage. Fecal incontinence problem after colorectal surgery can have a major impact on quality of life. Surgical nerve damage may play a major role in the development of fecal incontinence. Fecal incontinence can worsen over time in case of radiotherapy, respecting or rebuild the different factor on con of continence evoked in this stage is the best way to prevent minor or major problem of fecal continence. Several non-surgical therapy of fecal incontinence problem are available. Conservative therapies should be the first line choice before complex surgical procedures. I hope you have uh, appreciated this uh, lecture and uh, you will uh, send message to discuss. I'm open for discussion and thanks you for your attention.